forge your inner armor. It's amazing what the human brain can do. Whatever you think your ceiling is, you're not in close. I've studied close to 70,000 brains, okay? Every brain is different. Yes, we try to put people into boxes, but it's not that easy. It's like a fingerprint, you know, it's just totally unique. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Until you get the metrics, and I call it neuroanalytics, where we break down even these elite athletes and see what, what's under the hood, and you would be amazed at how little is being tapped into because nobody's looking at the neurology, the sleep cycles, the vision, the breathing, the heart rate. They're just looking at wingspan and how high they can jump. Liberty is on the front edge, okay? This program, is ahead of its time. You know, 50 years ago, did everybody have a weight room? No, maybe not. This is the future weight room, the resilience lab. You guys have some goals and the way that you're going to achieve those goals is to outlast your opponent. That's why I'm calling this resilience. There are two basic programs that you are working with when you sit at the computers in our lab working with the Inner Armor program. It's a breathing exercise and a vision exercise. Convergence and divergence has to do with the movement on my eyes. Close, far, pitcher mound, bat. I'm moving, these are muscles. They're moving out to the pitcher they're moving into the bat. If there's a weak eye and the ball's coming at me and it can't sustain that, that synchronization, which happens if those muscles are weak, the brain will, for a millisecond, it will see double. Well, what's the one thing the brain hates? Double vision. And it will do everything in its power to stop double vision. So what does it do? It shuts down the weak eye and that last 10 feet, you're tracking the ball to the bat with one eye. So what she's doing right now is she is working her left and right eye separately. So while she wears the 3D glasses, one eye can only see the red box and one eye can only see the blue box. So she's training those muscles to use both eyes binocularly to bring them together and see something that we can't see without the glasses on. What we're trying to do is isolate a component of our visual fields that is very hard to train outside of using the, the 3D glasses. It's definitely getting more and more straining as we go because I can tell they're getting further apart. So my eyes are working really hard to bring them together and I feel like I'm going cross-eyed a little. They described it the first time that I ever did it as working out your eye muscles and it feels like that. The same way you would feel kind of tired after doing a lot of squats, your eye muscles feel really tired the first time you do this. So over time, your eyes will just get stronger and the movements that they make will be quicker. But I think my ability to process the information I'm seeing is faster. I'm doing jump randoms. So basically I'm switching back and forth between convergence and divergence. So I play soccer and I'm a defender. So the way that vision has helped me perform on the field is I may be defending someone and staring straight at the ball, and then I only have like maybe a few split seconds um, to find an open player and pass it to them before I'm gonna start getting defended myself. So like vision training has helped me um, be able to see people while I'm staring at the ball defending, and so I can pass it to them immediately and know who's the open player. Being a middle, it's extremely important to have good vision because you're worried about all three hitters at all times. We practice something called eye sequencing and practice all the time, where we basically track the ball and try to beat the ball to wherever the hitter's coming from so that we can set up a good solid block. Um, and so when you practice vision like this, you're able to make those moves a lot quicker um, and then ultimately set up a better block for your defense. 
not only are we going to be better athletes, but we're going to have better performing brains. So this isn't about whether or not I can breathe, because hopefully all of you are breathing right now, but it's can you breathe well for some very specific purposes? The one thing that produces 90% of our energy is oxygen. And what you do see in elite athletes is they have this unbelievable ability to manage the breathing well. How is the heart responding to my breathing, okay? And that's the key point. Once you line up your breathing with what your heart's doing, you experience this thing called coherence, where the two are working in sync. And when that happens, you can do anything in the external environment and internally we're under complete control, even though it's the ninth inning and I've got to hit the home run to win the game. My heart and everything is under control because I'm controlling my breathing. Over time, you start to do it more and more, and then you find yourself, like I'll be at the baseball field and I'll see myself just breathing in the same patterns that I've been doing in here, and, and so it slowly becomes second nature. Baseball is one of those unique games where it's slow, but it's also really quick um, in those small moments, and so you have to be able to get in the box, um, compete, but then also reset and kind of stay composed and not let a big moment get to you. So it helps you to stay in control of yourself and stay in control of your body. The greatest commodity when you bring an athlete in here is their brain. They might become in different shapes, sizes, whatever, but it's their brain. And if you're not working on the brain from an athletic side of things, you're not gonna see what that person's real ceiling is.